Have you ever woken up on a busy day, missed your scheduled workout, and immediately pictured your muscles shrinking by the hour? It's a common fear among dedicated lifters. A single missed session feels like it might undo all the hard work spent in the gym. But the reality is far more forgiving. While it's true that use it or lose it applies to muscle mass over the long haul, your body doesn't simply discard your gains the moment you skip a workout or two. In fact, most research suggests that you can comfortably go around two or even three weeks without noticing any significant muscle loss, provided you were consistently training beforehand. That probably sounds reassuring, but why is that the case? And what actually happens to your muscles during this so-called detraining period? The truth lies somewhere in between. But don't worry, I will break down everything in a simple way to understand. But first, make sure to give this video a like. It only takes two seconds, but it will help the channel a lot. Let's address the elephant in the room. The most common observation people have when they step away from the gym for a few days, they look and feel flatter. This phenomenon usually occurs after a single week of inactivity, sometimes even after just a few missed sessions. But the key point to understand is that this initial drop in muscle fullness is not true atrophy. Instead, what you're experiencing is mostly the loss of muscle glycogen and water, the energy reserves that fill your muscle cells. Think of your muscles as a well-stocked pantry. When you train regularly, your body packs those muscle fibers with glycogen and fluids to fuel your workouts. The moment you stop training, you stop restocking that pantry and it gradually depletes. Your muscles may appear smaller or less pumped, but structurally, they remain intact for quite some time. Several studies, including those published in physiological reports, confirm that short-term breaks lead to more pronounced changes in glycogen storage and fluid balance rather than the immediate breakdown of muscle fibers. To make it more relatable, imagine blowing up a balloon to its fullest capacity. Right after a workout, your muscles are like that fully inflated balloon, engorged with blood, glycogen, and various metabolites. A few days after you skip the gym, that balloon deflates slightly as glycogen levels dip and blood flow returns to normal. The balloon itself hasn't popped or disappeared, it's just not inflated to maximum capacity. Once you jump back into your workout routine, that balloon can fill up quickly again. This is why you may feel a rapid rebound in size and strength after resuming training, even if you took a week or two completely off. But what happens if your break extends beyond that two or three week mark? This is where real muscle atrophy can start to creep in, especially if you remain almost entirely sedentary. According to studies in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, muscle protein synthesis rates can drop, and without any stimulus to maintain or grow, your body will slowly pare down muscle tissue. This process still isn't as abrupt as many fear. You won't wake up after 21 days looking like you've never picked up a dumbbell in your life, but you might notice a gradual decrease in both size and strength, particularly in those fast-switch muscle fibers that thrive on high-intensity training. Even then, the concept of muscle memory acts like an insurance policy for those who've built a solid base. Once you return to consistent training, you regain lost muscle faster than it took to build it the first time. Because your muscles retain additional myonuclei, essentially the blueprints for rebuilding muscle quickly. For a vivid example, look no further than college athletes. During the academic year, they train hard, perhaps in a structured collegiate sports program. Over summer break, many of them go home and drastically reduce their workout frequency. Upon returning to campus in the fall, they initially feel less explosive and look less muscular. Yet, within a few weeks of practice, they often return to near-peak levels of performance. This speedy comeback is largely due to muscle memory and the fact that they never truly lost all their training adaptations. They merely let them go dormant for a short period. Think of it like turning off a car engine for a while. You're not removing the engine from the car, you're just letting it idle. Once you turn the key again, it doesn't take long to get up to full speed, especially if it was a well-tuned machine to begin with. One of the most reassuring findings in modern exercise science comes from examining how quickly people can regain muscle after longer layoffs. Studies in sports medicine have shown that previously trained athletes can return to their prior strength and size levels within a fraction of the time it took them to build that muscle initially. The reason? Over the course of your training career, your muscles accumulate more myonuclei. Think of them as control centers that help coordinate muscle protein synthesis. Even if your muscles shrink during extended inactivity, those extra myonuclei tend to remain for months or even years. The moment you start lifting again, these control centers ramp up protein synthesis at a much faster rate than in an untrained individual, allowing you to rebuild size and strength rapidly. 
So how exactly do you prevent or minimize muscle loss if you know you won't be able to get to the gym for a while? There are a couple of strategies. One approach is to incorporate low-frequency maintenance workouts, even if they're extremely short. Research indicates that performing just a few heavy sets of a compound exercise like squats or bench presses once a week can preserve a large chunk of your gains. Another trick is to use bodyweight exercises such as push-ups, pull-ups, or squats at home. While these might not completely replicate the intensity of your usual gym routine, they do enough to signal your muscles that they're still needed. That signal can slow atrophy significantly, especially over shorter layoff periods. Let's step back and consider an analogy that might make this even clearer. Your muscles are akin to a memory foam mattress. When you lie down on it regularly, it contours perfectly to your body. If you step away, the mattress returns to its original shape. But the moment you lie back down again, it quickly adjusts, remembering the indentations you once made. Similarly, once your muscles have adapted to a certain level of resistance training, stepping away for a short time lets them bounce back to a more neutral state, but they can rapidly readapt once you return. Now you might be wondering, how do elite athletes handle time off? Let's take an example from the world of professional sports. Say an NBA player who has to rest for two weeks due to a minor injury. The athlete might lose some court-specific conditioning and might look a bit flatter in terms of muscle fullness. However, they typically engage in rehabilitative exercises or light workouts to keep the neurological pathways active. When they rejoin full practice, the athlete's skill set and physical condition rebound quickly because they never allowed the body to truly forget how to move explosively or handle the workload. The same concept applies to a devoted lifter or bodybuilder who experiences a forced break. If they keep some form of light activity or at least maintain mental engagement with training concepts, which could be visualization, stretching, or mobility work, they find the reintroduction of heavy lifting far less jarring. We see a more extreme example of muscle memory in older bodybuilders or powerlifters. Consider someone who built massive strength in their 20s and 30s, then took a decade-long hiatus. While they might have lost most of their size and strength during that time, they will typically regain it at a pace that astonishes newcomers once they commit to training again. Decade-long breaks obviously push the limits of muscle memory, but the underlying principle still holds. The cellular and neurological adaptations from serious training persist to some degree, smoothing the path of readaptation. There's also a psychological aspect to remember. Many of us tie our self-image to how we look or perform in the gym. Skipping even a few workouts can create a mental spiral where we feel smaller or weaker, even if physiologically we haven't lost much of anything. This sense of perceived regression can be more damaging than the actual physical loss, because it saps motivation and may lead to poorer dietary choices or further inactivity. Understanding that real muscle atrophy doesn't set in immediately is key to breaking this negative cycle. Realizing that a couple of missed workouts or a week off might even serve as a valuable deload for your body can be liberating. Often, people come back feeling fresher, stronger, and more eager to train, which might propel them past prior plateaus. To paint a brighter picture, think about gym goers who take a short holiday. They feel a bit guilty maybe because they're sipping cocktails on the beach or spending time with family instead of pumping iron. However, when they return, they're often surprised to find that their lifts haven't dropped much at all. In some cases, they're able to push heavier weights or do more reps simply because they're mentally and physically recovered from the constant strain of training. This isn't to say extended layoffs are always beneficial. Long breaks can certainly lead to measurable declines, but occasional, well-timed breaks can sometimes offer unexpected benefits. Now, let's touch on nutrition because it's another crucial factor in determining how quickly you lose muscle during your time away from the gym. If your diet remains high in protein and you're consuming enough calories to meet at least your baseline needs, your body is less likely to break down muscle tissue for energy. Conversely, if you drastically cut calories or protein intake during a training hiatus, you raise the likelihood of muscle catabolism. Keeping your protein intake around one gram per pound of body weight or slightly less if you're less active can be a safety net that preserves muscle mass until you resume training again. Hydration also plays a big role. When you're dehydrated, your muscles appear flatter, which can create an illusion of more significant muscle loss. Simply staying well hydrated can counteract part of that deflated feeling you get after missing a few workouts. It may seem basic, but plenty of lifters overlook hydration's role in maintaining muscle fullness and recovery especially when they're not actively training. So let's summarize the timeline. The first week of inactivity typically sees a noticeable drop in muscle pump, 
but it's mostly glycogen and water depletion rather than minimize muscle loss, by two to three weeks, you might begin experiencing a small degree of muscle atrophy. But even this is often modest <sighs> if you've been consistently training beforehand. Beyond three weeks, atrophy becomes more pronounced, but the rate at which you lose muscle varies based on individual genetics, daily activity levels, nutrition, and whether you do any light maintenance work. Still, even at that stage, muscle memory ensures you'll regain lost ground faster than someone who's never trained. This understanding should help relieve some of that stress when you're faced with short-term disruptions, whether it's a busy week at the office, a short vacation, or an unforeseen event. An interesting real-life example to highlight is the case of bodybuilders who prep for competitions. They push their bodies to the limit and then, after the show, might take a break. Sometimes a couple of weeks of lighter workouts or no training at all to let their bodies recover. Although they drop some water and glycogen, they regain their fullness and strength within a week or two of returning to structured training. The before and after pictures can look dramatic because so much of that regained mass is simply rehydration and refueling of depleted glycogen stores. True atrophy, in the sense of losing muscle fibers, requires a much longer period of inactivity, especially when you're starting from a well-trained state. Perhaps the best analogy is to compare muscle mass to a house you've built. The foundation and framework, your muscle fibers and myonuclei, take a long time to create. But once it's there, you can stop working on the house for a little while. Maybe the paint fades, the yard becomes overgrown, and it doesn't look as pristine, but the structure remains solid. When you decide to come back and renovate, you don't have to build the entire house from scratch. You're just cleaning it up and giving it a facelift. That is effectively how muscle memory works to your advantage. Once you've put in the time and effort to build a strong foundation, short breaks won't tear everything down. Given all this, the next time you catch yourself spiraling into anxiety over a missed workout, remember that your muscles aren't going to vanish instantly. If you're forced to take a break due to travel, personal commitments, or even a mild injury, try to incorporate some quick bodyweight moves or simply keep your protein intake up. But even if you do absolutely nothing for a couple weeks, the loss will largely be in your head, plus some minor changes in the muscle pump. When you come back, you'll find that your numbers recover quickly and sometimes you may even feel stronger or more motivated after that mental and physical break. On the flip side, if you're facing a prolonged hiatus, say a month or more, be mindful of slowly reintroducing intensity when you return. Trying to pick up exactly where you left off could lead to injury or excessive soreness. However, you'll still be likely surprised at how fast you can rebuild. That's the beauty of muscle memory. Once you've learned to handle heavy weights and packed on the muscle, there's a sort of muscle blueprint stored in your body. So how long can you skip the gym before losing muscle? In most cases, two or three weeks of total inactivity won't decimate your gains. You might look or feel flatter, but the base is still there. True muscle atrophy takes longer to set in. And even then, your comeback will be much faster than the time it initially took to build that muscle. If you need a short break, don't stress. Your body is more adaptable and generous than you give it credit for, especially if you've been training hard and fueling yourself properly. And if you find yourself away from training for a longer period, focus on the small things like light movement, decent nutrition, and mental preparation for your return. You'll be back to form and feeling confident in no time. Let me know in the comments what's the longest break you've taken from the gym and how quickly did you get your groove back when you returned. If you found value in this video, make sure to give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you want to achieve a Greek god physique naturally, make sure you watch my full video series where I rank the best and worst exercises for muscle building.